Where are you from? I'm from Northside, man. Lawrenceville, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Archer and Norcross. Live between Archer, you know, Lawrenceville and Norcross. Whole life. Almost whole life, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? People don't really know about us for real, but they don't now. So, yeah. What was life like growing up in Lawrenceville? Um, it was boring until 2014, because that's when the Migos came out. And they were like, oh, we're actually cool. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, we kind of broke out of that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was I wouldn't say it was boring. It was cool to me. I was a kid. I didn't really know the difference for real between, you know what I'm saying? It was late, it was not. But yeah, I mean, it was quiet. It was cool. Um, I feel like the recession kind of hit everybody kind of hard. So, I mean, I guess on like that type of stuff, it wasn't that great. The housing industry was terrible, but you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it was smooth. It was smooth. Mm-hmm. Were you an artistic child? Um, I was actually. Um, I don't remember any of this, but apparently I was like drawing like accurate Dragon Ball stuff when I was like three. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even believe the story when I was told, but I mean, multiple family members said it, so I was like, okay, cool. And then um, I started really trying to draw for real. Like, cause I started with drawing. That was like my first form of art that I was really doing. Um, maybe like third grade, and I remember. I drew, I was drawing like some X-Men stuff. And then my dad was like, I'm not gonna lie, you gotta do better. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, you know what I'm saying? So by sixth grade, I was him, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was going crazy. But then, um, yeah, I was just drawing all day in class. I used to get in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Teachers used to be calling my mom, telling me, stop letting him bring his comic books to school. Cause I used to be drawing out of them all day. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, just consuming every kind of media, all TV, all everything, just, I don't know, that kind of guides everything I kind of do. The cartoons, you know what I'm saying, the cartoons, it all starts with the cartoons, but yeah. Do you come from an artistic family? Um, yeah, actually, um, my, hold on, great, great, I think two greats, uncle, that's your great-grandmother's brother, right? It's a great, great, great. <laughs> I think, maybe I don't yeah, know. Great, 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 something. We get the picture. Yeah, he was like apparently some like, um, you know, what I'm saying James Fortune. Yeah, the goat. So he was a jazz artist. Yeah, I'm just recently finding this out. But yeah, that's like apparently he used to. He's like really big in the blues and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty cool. Um, a lot of my family members sing on my mom. That was on my dad's side, out of the Chicago way of things. Um, Chicago, Mississippi, and then my mom's side, everybody was in the choir, essentially. You know what I'm saying? I don't make music, I do other stuff. But yeah, my uncle really kind of inspired me to start drawing too, because he used to like draw me, he actually went to art school and was like professional with it. So he used to like draw me a whole bunch of stuff when I was a kid, and I just always thought that stuff was cool. So yeah. Mm-hmm. And so earlier you mentioned that like drawing was your first art form. Mm-hmm. Did you want to originally pursue a c- career with drawing or like when did the photography come into play? Um, I'd say I kind of stopped, really stopped drawing like almost completely when I kind of hit high school because I wanted to do basketball. I was like, yeah, sports are cool now. So I wanted to do basketball, but then I broke my leg and then that was the end of that. So. After that, um, I was just kind of chilling for a couple of years, just going through high school, you know what I'm saying, doing homework, nothing too extra. I was in band, you know what I'm saying, but that was really the only art form I was really doing mm-hmm. for a couple of years. And then, I don't know, I was, I think my photography stuff really started, like, I love nature a lot, so I just kind of kind of take these, like, mental pictures, you know what I'm saying, but at some point, I think at the end of high school, I was like, why not just actually do it instead of, you know what I'm saying. So, oh yeah, I originally wanted a camera just to take pictures of nature. But then um, when I finally got one, I was like, yeah, I started going into you know, this underground music scene, yeah. for sure. How do your parents feel about your creative pursuits? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, they they, they kind of like it, I think. Um, it kind of clashes with school a lot. So they'd rather I finish school and then start you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, I'm kind of a, not a full thought type of guy because I understand the plan A, plan B argument that, you know, so you, you I'm sure everyone's having with their parents at this point that does this. But um, yeah, they support it. Um, as long as they know that I'm serious in what I'm doing and I'm just not just lollygagging, you know what I'm saying, out here chilling, 
mm -hmm. taking pictures for fun, you know, call myself a photographer. As long as they're making some kind of motion, make sure it's concrete, I think they're cool with it for the most part. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, dreams or like big endeavors outside of your music career? Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to go to Colorado or California and I want to go snowboarding. Mm -hmm. Snowboarding has always been a dream since like probably 2011. I got Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games and I used to play dream snowboarding nonstop all day. That's always been a dream of mine. I got to go. I feel like I'm automatically going to be good at it. I'm going to do a backflip off of a mountain. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. For sure. Who were um, some of the people who inspired you to start photography? Mm. Were there any, like, photographers? That you Honestly, liked? there weren't any photographers. I'd say there's some people I'm inspired by now whose work I like, but they're all kind of local. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of my peers that inspire me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My friend Milo, unannounced, he's a GOAT. Alex Ojomo, you know what I'm saying, right down the hall, he's a GOAT, you know what I'm saying. Um, obviously, you have like your gunner stalls and stuff, but I, I kind of got into the photography game late, so I didn't really pay attention to them, at, you know what I'm saying, when they were really going crazy with their portfolios and whatnot. But, um, yeah, um, I really think, as far as photography goes, that go kind of leads into, like, the modeling music side, too. That's where the music kicks in, because I used to just be sitting down, like I said, just absorbing all kind of media and stuff, right? So I'd just be sitting down watching music videos all day. You know what I'm saying? Music videos, interviews like this one, you know what I'm saying? Shows, you know what I'm saying? Concerts, live concert footage, diving into SoundCloud and all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe just want to, instead of like, most people say they get, they watch that stuff and get, or I feel like they see it and then they want to make music. But me, I just wanted to capture it, you know what I'm saying? Instead of, you know what I'm saying? Just going a different route. I just wanted to I want to produce it. I wanted to produce it. And I wanted to capture it. You know what I'm saying? Because I liked how instead of like seeing like the rapper going crazy, I'd see the video going crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'd see the angles, the editing, yada yada yada. So I feel like that's that's really how that started. What is your ultimate aspiration with everything that you're doing? Um, ultimate aspiration, I say. I don't know. I just want to. One, I just want to keep everything in the family. Um, my little art family, uh, you know what I'm saying? We call ourselves Vanguard, you know what I'm saying? And then we have Two Let Die Rich on the side. I wouldn't say on the side, but you know what I'm saying? It's together. It's like two art collectives I'm kind of started and in, in with, you know what I'm saying? We're kind of like a close-knit family. Of just We have everybody, rappers, art people, seamsters, seamstresses, you know what I'm saying? We just all, I want, um, yeah, I just want to support everybody for real, for real. Like, I think my main thing that keeps me going like day to day is making sure that I can take care of them and what they got to do. So if there's a rapper, I want to be able to, you know what I'm saying, talk business for them. I want to be able to use my camera to get in the rooms to talk to certain people that can help them out. You feel me? I want to, um, you know what I'm saying, make those music videos to get the people they need to get to to look at them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's one of my, one of my main goals and aspirations. You know what I'm saying? As far as we go, um, yeah, because I don't even say I for real. It's really a we thing. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we, and I can't speak for everybody, I feel like, but I feel like for the most part, we are trying to change what's going on. So whether that be creating a new style of music, changing how the business side of things works, you know what I'm saying? That staying independent, you know what I'm saying? Owning your masters, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it, just keeping it within the family, you know what I'm saying? For our people and our art collective, you know what I'm saying? So I think, yeah, I think our goal is to really to just change what's going on. Yeah. yeah. What inspired you to have that sort of like we mindset, that um, we mentality? Just the love for my brothers and sisters, really. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I grew up with all these people. You know what I'm saying? These people have always been around, so why wouldn't I want to help them out? You know what I'm saying? Just as they want to help me out. You know what I'm saying? And and have. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the people. You know what I'm saying? I kind of I didn't watch Naruto until I turned like 20, but when I did watch it, I was like. This is it, you know what I'm saying? Kind of how like, Konoha kind of, everybody comes together and they also, you know what I'm saying? Somebody needs support, they all come and support them, you know what I'm saying? Or like, when Sasuke left, they're like, man, I really hate that dude, but <laughs> let's go save him anyway, you know what I'm saying? He's still one of us. Like, I just really rocked with that, you know what I'm saying? I think, um, yeah, that's really how I see our group too, kind of just like, a whole bunch of talented individuals and different, we're all talented in different things and less than others, you know what I'm saying? But we all come together to get that ultimate goal done. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you.
Has your career caused any conflicts in your personal life? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, being a videographer, photographer, I spend most of my time editing. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's kind of hard to be outside sometimes as I want to be, because I do, you know what I'm saying, model too, so you know what I'm saying, you always got to be outside talking to people for that, but then, so yeah, that's that, um, homework, don't really, you know what I'm saying, sometimes, a lot of times I choose to sit down and edit this video instead of doing this assignment I got to do tonight, that's hurt me bad, but trying try to turn it around, you know what I'm saying, just learning that balance, but um, yeah, personal, like personal relationships with people, I'd say, I'd say it's all right, um, yeah, photography and videography lets you talk to new people because well, the way I do it, you know, portrait is music based. So it's literally, literally talking to people is the whole job, connecting with new people, um, yeah. capturing everybody's moments. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, as far as that, like socially, I'm doing fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. It's not like a lonely job. You know what I'm saying? It's well, it is what you make it. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool though. How did you choose your pseudonym? All right, so C4. My name is Chaz Fortune. Um, I kind of, you can kind of see it. But I was playing basketball in eighth grade, and then really my dad came up with it. He was like, because my number was four on my back, so he was just like C4 because he exploded on the court, and I was like, cool. And then um, I kind of just, I kind of forgot about it until I started doing this type of art stuff, and I was like, everybody else has a cool name. You know, saying got my boy Yak in the building. You know, what I'm saying that's not his name, but it just, you know, what I'm saying everybody got a cool like. Super, you know, superhero name. So I went and went. I was like, well, that was what I used to use. So that's where I got that from. But yeah. What's been the most memorable moment in your career so far? All right. So most memorable moment this past summer. My boy, um, last night did a show with Red Bull and my boy Cross. Um, it was the first time meeting these people. You know what I'm saying? Really like, that was kind of like the, one of the bigger shows that we've done. I don't know if it's the biggest, but one of them. Um, we kind of all came together, uh, me and the Vanguardians, we all kind of came together and cause Cross had made a, um, it was like a sweepstakes. So like whoever gets tagged most in the comments gets to, gets to perform. And I literally just sit there all day just typing at no clip, at no clip, at no clip, at no clip. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is. So we kind of all came together. I like that one particular moment, that part of it. Cause you know what I'm saying? It just shows that we can all lift each other up. You know what I'm saying? That was cool. So then we got there and then. It was cool. We, we performed with a lot of artists that we listened to, so that's that was always that's that was a crazy moment. You know, what I'm saying being on that same stage, and then Digital Nas was supposed to headline, but he had came and left, so we ended up headlining, and then we just rocked the show out. You know, what I'm saying the energy was crazy. I never felt anything like that. You know, what I'm saying and like going back and watching my footage, it was just that was the first time I ever. I, I never had goosebumps in my life, but then like the first time I watched that footage, it was like the first time I felt. I was like, it was on my arm. And I was like, oh, that's what that is. You know, so I feel like that was that was my that was my most memorable moment in this stuff so far. But yeah, what's the most satisfying aspect of your photography and videography career? Hmm. I can't speak for everybody, but for me, it's like when I finish like a good edit and I go and look back, you know what I'm saying? I just be like, I'm him. Like I literally start like, yeah, jumping in the seat. Like, you know what I'm saying? With that feeling where you actually, that, and then when you're on YouTube and it's in the blue line, the blue stripe line is loading. You know what I'm saying? Though I think those are the most, those are the best, the best feelings where you get. Cause it's like, when you finally finish that project and put it out to the world, that's a good feeling. And then like, when you see, or you catch yourself in that flow state, like kind of like from the outside, actually going crazy and doing your thing. I think that's pretty cool. For someone watching this, mm -hmm. who aspires to do what you do, what advice would you have for them? Um, stay pure in your inspiration, you know. Don't spend all your time on Pinterest, you know what I'm saying? Don't, um, don't compare yourself to others on Instagram too. Because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of stuff that's trendy right now isn't going to be trendy in five years. You know what I'm saying? You may start what's trendy in five years. You know what I'm saying? So take your own influences, you feel me, and make what you, make what you want out of that. Take your own life experiences, your own, your own inspirations, you know what I'm saying? Whether that be, like for me, like I said, movies and TV is kind of like a big thing for me. But say you're just, you're, you're inspired by the place you're at or... You're inspired by people you meet, you know what I'm saying? Talk about those things and put that stuff in your art because that's what it's, realness shows, you know what I'm saying? If you're just trying to emulate something, it, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, but it's, it's going to show. We're going to see it. We're not rocking with that. But um, 
Because even if people say your stuff is boring, like if it's real to you, people, somebody's gonna notice and you're gonna get that cult following that you want. So yeah, just be real.